Hello, my name's Lucas Simpson. Today I'm going to teach you how to play Mean Julio down by the schoolyard. If you're interested in some chords and lyrics, I can send these to you. I also have another sheet here with these triads, or um, actually I've got, I have them written down as uh, four string chords. Uh, just shoot me an email at lucassimpson1 at gmail.com and I can send those your way. Uh, I also give online lessons. If you're interested in that, shoot me an email. But let's get into it. So there are two guitar parts and uh, We'll start here with these, what I'm calling triads, or you can also turn them into bigger chords if you want, but that's, this is what they start with at the beginning. Both, both guitars play. So there's your A, and then your D, A, and E. So a chord is three notes. And here we have an instrument that has six strings. You only need three to make the chord. And so that's what we call triads. And um, if you think of a full chord, you're basically just sort of taking part of that chord when you're making these triads. So this A, for instance, here, this first one, it looks like what your A bar chord which is essentially, if you know your E major chord, right? You can do that with these fingers. Move that up, make it into a bar chord. Not the easiest chord, but you can do it with some practice. Using, try to use the side of your finger. That's a good suggestion there. Don't get the fleshy part, but try to get the harder side of the finger. You can also shrink that into a smaller chord with just a, a partial bar on the first two strings and then getting that underneath it. You could even wrap your thumb around to get that, uh, that sixth string. If you just take that shape up to the fifth fret, there's your A. Or, or. So we're just going to shrink that then to just that much of the chord. So that's going to be on the fifth string, or first string, fifth fret, second string, fifth fret, third string, sixth fret, fourth string, seventh fret. If you even just shrink it to the first three strings, that works. I'll have to listen again. Maybe that's what they're doing, just the three strings, but you can also get the four there. All right. Um, and then you have there's your D four, which is not necessarily an actual D chord if you get these four, or this. but I think that's how they're doing it there. And so that's on the um, on the seventh fret, all four of those, okay? So that would be like, um, no, is that, let's see, which one is that? It's like your A, your A shape moved up to the, um, you're just moving that A, making that into a bar chord, moving that up to the seventh fret with your bar on the fifth fret. However, instead of a pure D chord here, 
we're also going to be covering that first string on the seventh fret. And if you listen, I think that's what they're doing. So we've got and okay. So practice those. Your E looks like a D chord. Only you're gonna bring that up. Uh, let's see. To the fourth. So that's gonna be the fourth string, or I'm sorry, first string on the fourth fret, second string on the fifth fret, third string on the fourth fret. And if you add another finger, your pinky can reach over and grab that fourth string on the sixth fret. So we can get into something called the, the caged system uh, to kind of understand how we can find these chords up and down the neck. And I don't know if we want to get deep into that in the video here, but uh, C and D kind of connect that's C, A, G, E, D, and then C again. So that D shape moved up here to the E. Kind of have my C and my D together. I'm not gonna get into that right now. But, so there we go. And um, if we wanna play later on in the song, we have a B, we also have a G. So getting those triads up the neck we're simply taking that A one, right? Remember that was on the uh, first and second strings on the fifth fret, the third string on the sixth, fourth on the seventh. So that's our A. And if we just move that from five, six, seven up to seven, eight, nine, there's the B. And up there in that same area, we keep that finger right there. Um, and then those, that would be the E, or you could just do probably a little bit easier there. So that's going to be 7th fret, 1st string 7th fret, 2nd string ninth fret, and third string ninth fret and then you could also add fourth string ninth fret if you wanted to that's your e all right and uh if you get, if you get the g this way you just go the opposite way with this a so instead of five six seven we move that down to there so there's two different guitars, like I had mentioned, and they have a consistent rhythm. And that's what really makes the song, in my opinion, is the, the, the opposing rhythms that they have with each other. They, it sounds really cool when you put them together. So um, I'll, I'll play these. Uh, the first guitar, the main guitar, is going to be... Um, I'll just play them here in the open position with the A and the D, A, E. And so this rhythm is going to be show you two things here one um, you know when I learned a a long time ago I just learned to make an open a chord by just three three fingers in a row on the uh, second third and fourth strings on the second fret and play all of them you really have to sort of cram your fingers in especially if you have big hands like I do to fit in that small space but here's an idea take your index finger and put that in the middle of those so then your index is on that 
third string on the second fret. Middle goes to the fourth, ring goes to the second. Not only does that make your A easier, but it creates an anchor then to get from A to D to A. And then when you go to your E, you can just take that same, um, just leave it on that string, but then you just slide it down to the first fret. And then you can put these two to get the E. So you got A, D, A, E with this finger sort of anchored to all of those, which makes it way easier to get from chord to chord if you have something that just stays down. As a general rule, also try to just leave any fingers down as, as much as you can. Every time you take everything off, then you have to find your way back. You also get more sustained by leaving the fingers down. Whether you're playing uh, individual notes, playing a solo, or whether you're playing chords, only lift your fingers off when you have to. Or if it's just getting in the way, then obviously you can too, but generally that helps. So uh, the second one is going to stay up here with these higher triads the entire time. The second guitar part. And it goes... The whole time. But let's get, into, let's get back into the rhythm of the first guitar. So you've got... I'm going to do it, I'm going to do the rhythm just with the A chord, and it will go. Okay, so that is. Also vary that a little bit. You could you could potentially play down up down down up down up 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 down up down. And you're just missing those ups, those two other ups in there. So that is uh, a four measure progression there, or a, or a two measure progression, I guess. One and two. goes one and two and three and four. Or you can go the most important thing here, and I stress this all the time, is that you keep the hand moving. This motion is way more important than if you hit or miss in any pattern. It's whenever the hand stops, that's where you get in trouble. All right, so you want to keep that moving and, um, you know, you want to try to play the pattern, obviously, but as long as you keep that moving, it, the, the flow of the song will keep going and you'll be able to sort of keep pushing it along. So again, that's going to be So this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to make a part two for me and Julio, but um, check out part two to learn the rest. <laughs>